Hello folks, my name is Mark Wilson and I'm the founder of AccuModel, where we inspire confidence in hydraulic modeling. This video today will be the first one in a series of just simple hydraulic modeling tutorials. The purpose of this is just to kind of build up towards some other advanced topics when we're talking about hydraulics as it relates to EPNet and modeling software that is based off of EPNet. So today's lesson is just on, I guess, energy and energy loss, head loss. So if you've ever taken high school physics, here's a common problem. Here's a hill, and here's a ball or a box or some object at the top of the hill. And when we're talking about energy, usually in high school physics, we talk about kinetic energy and potential energy. So potential energy is this ball or rock up here at the top of the hill and it's at some distance above some datum and we'll call this H. Okay, And I'm not going to write down all the equations for this type of uh, energy, but just, just to suffice it that when it's sitting here at rest it has some potential energy, it's not moving, but it has the potential to release some of this energy because of gravity as it comes down the hill and then it has some kinetic energy and then at some point it'll become at rest again and we're just going to kind of talk about that and then compare that to fluid mechanics. So let's say we come in and push this rock and it starts rolling down the hill. Some of this potential energy that I had up here is converted to kinetic or motion energy. So now at some point here it has a velocity and some momentum, but we can see here that it's losing potential energy. And it comes down the hill here and it's probably going to pick up some more velocity. And so the, it's going to gain more kinetic energy or, or momentum. But so we can see that over time this is uh, the potential energy is converted into kinetic energy but we probably all have experience that at some point that ball or rock or whatever is going to slow down and come to rest somewhere over here and then at that point we're going to say that if we're using this new location over here as the datum to measure the height then at this point height some point uh, is equal to zero and it's lost it all, all its energy uh, because we don't it don't have any motion anymore there's no kinetic energy but where did it go well we say that there's some friction and otherwise as this if there was if this was a frictionless slope this ball would just start to slide down the hill and it would go on, on forever so we have some energy loss due to friction. Okay. Now, why do we care about that? Well, that relates to hydraulics or fluid mechanics. Okay. Let's say we have a reservoir up here on the hill. And that's how we're going to draw a reservoir. And we have a pipe This is how we draw it in hydraulics class, right? Oh, that's a terrible drawing. Okay, and then we have another reservoir here. Boy, that's a really embarrassing drawing. Anyway, this pipe has a length, and we can say that the, the fluid, let's say there's a valve here. Let's take this little water droplet. Let's draw that in this color 
Okay, so there's this little droplet here at the very top of the reservoir on over on the left side. It's just sitting there. It's not moving, uh, but it has some potential energy because just like the rock on the hill, it has a height above this other reservoir. And let's just say, just for fun, the height of this water level is, and then we'll call that H naught, is 100 feet. And we'll call this one over here is zero feet. Okay, so this droplet over here has essentially a hundred feet of potential energy. It'll drop down to the bottom and eventually go down this pipe and into this reservoir if we open this valve. So why aren't these elevations of these reservoirs equal? Why isn't the water level up here? Well, just like there was friction going down the hill in the rock example, there's friction in this pipe. And why is there friction in the pipe? Well, if we look at a pipe cross-section, and let's use green, the velocity at the edge of the pipe just that very last atom of water touching the pipe wall, the velocity is zero. But when there's water moving in the pipe, there is the velocity in the middle has some value. So if we draw a velocity profile across here, the different spots in pipe, as you get closer to the wall, the velocity gets closer to zero. And so this kind of drag at the wall, where over here it's more than zero and here is zero, that creates turbulence and it creates energy loss. So we have to account for that and there's lots of equations that we can try to estimate that and that's what we're going to be looking at. So there's some pretty cool energy loss or energy equations and we can write that in a lot of different forms. But the form I'm going to write it in, and how we're going to describe the energy between point 1, this is point 1, this is point 2, or excuse me, point 2, somehow we've lost energy, but we're going to account for that. We're going to write the quantity of energy from this point to when the water hits this point. Okay, and we're going to write that as this. The pressure at point one over the specific weight of water plus the elevation above some datum plus the velocity squared over two times acceleration due to gravity and that equals the energy so we've got pressure at point two or the specific weight of water plus the elevation at two plus velocity at two squared over two times the acceleration due to gravity. Okay, so this is our basic writing energy at point one and energy at point two and we can manipulate these and use them to our advantage. And what we say is the energy that was lost due to friction or turbulence, whatever you want to say, from here at this point to this point can be quantified. The other reason why we write the energy equation in this fashion is because all these terms are actually in units of length. This elevation, and we'll use English units that are typical, this is in feet. When you solve pressure in terms of pounds per square foot divided by the specific weight of water in, in uh, that, those units, you get a foot here. And when you do velocity and gravity, those unit conversions, you get feet here. So all these are in units of feet. And so what we refer to this is head. So this is a pressure head. This is an elevation head. 
and this is what we call a velocity head. The only thing we're missing here in this equation is the head loss that happened due to, we're going to call it friction again, that's kind of a weird term, but we're going to add friction over here on this side. Or we could subtract it from this side. So the energy would be the same at either point except for frictional losses. So there's lots of different ways to figure out what this frictional loss is. And the one that we're going to use is called Hazen-Williams. And the Hazen-Williams equation for frictional loss is frictional loss is equal to, I'm not going to go through the derivation here, but these are put in units of feet per second and feet. So this is 3.023 times the length of the pipe times the velocity in feet per second raised to the 1.852 power divided by a factor. We're going to call this the Hazen-Williams factor and we're going to give it a C sub H. We have to raise that to the 1.852 times the diameter in feet times 1.167. If the system here is at a state of equilibrium, meaning we have an equal amount of water coming in here and then going out this side and these elevations are staying constant, we know the friction is staying constant and we know that the elevations are staying constant, thus the velocity would stay constant. So our frictional loss in this case would be 100 feet. And so we could actually figure out what the velocity is and thus the flow by putting 100 feet on this side and then everything else is constant besides the velocity. And we can solve for V or uh, punch it into a solver and then we would come up with whatever the value is here. Okay, we're going to do one more manipulation here. We're going to manipulate this head loss equation down here one more time to get it in a form that we like to use when we use it in EPA net. So it's just a little bit different and we're going to give it instead of F sub L, we're going to give it head loss. Okay, so I'm just going to manipulate the V part of it. And again, I'm not going to go through the derivation again, but for units of feet and cubic feet per second, we have 4.728 times L times Q. And this is only for Hazen-Williams. This is the Hazen-Williams head loss equation. 1.852 divided by the Hazen-Williams coefficient to the 1.852 times the diameter raised to the 4.871. Okay, now we're going to use this to our advantage and probably push the rest of this conversation to the next video. But that's your basic hydraulics lesson. We can draw this actual total energy. You can look that up in other places. I'll just draw a quick energy gray line from here. Maybe we have some extra head loss at this valve at the end and through the entrance and that connects those two. If we calculate the total energy at any point along this system, we can quantify it as a total energy of whatever the case may be. So when you add up all these components, down here in the pipe there's going to be a pressure. That's this component of head. Up to here is elevation. Up to, say, this point is pressure. And then usually we look at the rest of this as the velocity head. So these three components, we've got Z or elevation, we've got P as pressure, and then we've got V as velocity head. The water droplet over here doesn't have any pressure because it's at the surface, but it does have an elevation and it has no velocity because it's not moving. So on point one, this is zero, this is a hundred, this is zero. Down over here, the water droplet at the surface that has pressure of zero. The head elevation is zero. This is our, since this is our datum, and it's also not moving anymore. So we've lost a hundred feet of head in this system between point one and point two. So that's your basic hydraulics lesson. We'll continue on with how this relates to EPA net on the next video. So thanks for watching, and if you like the video, go ahead and click like. Also subscribe to the playlist so that you'll see the next ones that I'll be doing.